bending back. So he's able to support a weight out here and still maintain his balance. But what he's doing, he's got sensors inside of his body that are constantly sending signals back to the spine to reposition that. So if you're going to hold a weight away from your body, your head goes further forward, your shoulders go back, so that the weight balance is in the midline. Can, can you see that? And if you have a problem with proprioception, you're going to have a problem with balance. So when you go from sitting to standing, you may, may feel a little unstable. And that has to do with a lot of medications. And that has to do with balance, because proprioception is your body's position in space. Now, let's say that you go from a sitting position to a standing position. Now, your heart, when you're sitting, it's low to gravity, so your heart has a certain beat. When you go from sitting to standing, your heart has to increase its speed. If not, your brain doesn't get enough oxygen. So what does the body do if your brain doesn't have enough oxygen? Dies. No. Okay. This is an adaptation of the body. Let's look at, and this is proprioception. This is the beautiful part. Your brain burns 25% of the total oxygen. Only weighs like two and a half pounds, okay? And you're telling me I'm a 250 pound guy that burns 25% of my oxygen? So what happens if that brain doesn't get it, what the body does is it kicks the legs out from underneath. So the head gets level with gravity and then oxygen can flow up. You know what that's called? Fainting. Passing out, fainting. I know, I like that. Oh my gosh, it makes sense. So that, that is a mechanism of how the body functions. So now your balance, your body's position in space is governed by three things. And this governs the tone of the muscles. So this is huge. Now you get three things. One, dorsal columns. That's information going up the spine. You have constant input from there. And that way you know whether to shift more weight to this side or this side. Whether you should lean forward or lean back. The other one is the cerebellum. Now that's at the base of the brain. Now alcohol and drugs affect the cerebellum. The other one is the vestibular ocular. What that is, it's the eyeball on the horizon. So if you're seeing something like this, okay, I know you're getting seasick right now. Okay, okay, just focus on a part that's not moving. Okay, that's what seasickness comes from. Your eyeballs are seeing something moving, but your brain is telling you something different. That's motion sickness. Okay, so you need, you can survive with any two of these three. What, how do police test to see if you're on medications? They take the eyeballs out of it and they tell you to tilt your head back. And if you lose balance, it could be prescription medications or drugs or something. Something's not working right. So you need all three of these to function correctly. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now that's proprioception. Now proprioception also governs these muscles down either side of the spine. So now let's see, should, now this, this is the question I always ask um, uh, when, I, when I'm up there guest lecturing at the human dissection. I say, who here would relax a muscle, okay, before you adjust that body? Now I'm talking to a bunch of chiropractors, and we're right over a human dissection body. Who would relax a muscle in order to have the body accept that adjustment? And I say it just like that. So, you know, what are they going to answer? Oh, I would, I would, I would. And I say, okay, good. If you're going to relax a muscle without knowing why it's in spasm, you're going to kill the patient. Fire that doctor. And then they're all going, what do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, so now you're all biomechanics. Let's talk about proprioception now. Now, in a normal human being, that head's balanced. That's normal. For every one inch that heads forward, the pressure on the discs double. You double the pressure on the discs, you're talking carpal tunnel syndrome, our cervogenic shoulder rotator cuff problems begin in the neck are cervogenic. 97% of all headaches, migraines, asthma, fibromyalgia, all of those could have origins in the neck. So now what's the body going to do if that head's forward? What's it going to do to these muscles back here? It's going to spasm them out to reposition it. So if you look at this person, this person, and this person, by gosh, do you think their shoulders are tight? Yes or yes? yes. So if you relax those shoulders that are trying to correct it, which way is the head going to fall? because they're trying to correct it. So you relax those, which way does the head fall? Boom. Further forward, more pressure on the disc, then they spasm out again. This is the crazy part, because somebody working at a desk will have this body posture and they'll feel that tight muscle, and what are they taught by almost every professional that's, that's in the health around? Oh, it's a tight muscle, better stretch it. 
So they've got this forward head posture, and so then at the end of the day, they start, oh yeah, that stretch feels good. Gosh, the muscle pain came right back. I better stretch it again. Oh, the muscle pain came right back. I better stretch. No! <laughs> Stop the insanity. Find out why, they're, why it's out. By gosh, because if you restore the curve in this, you reposition the head, you take away why the muscles are firing. Does that make more sense? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is that why your chiropractor keeps telling you to do the neck curve exercise to relax the muscles? Oh my gosh, you must have taught biomechanics. Now also, let's, let's look at this, not as a muscle problem. <coughs> Just sit up nice and straight, put your head forward, and take a deep breath. <sighs> Okay, now reposition the head and take a deep breath. 100% of you notice the difference in breathing? Yeah, that's because these, this rib cage has to expand. If your head's forward, you can't expand the top aspect of the lungs. So now since it's harder to breathe, it's harder to get oxygen in that little two and a half pound brain. That brain burns 25% of the body's oxygen. So what's the body gonna have to do with the blood pressure? Up it. Up it. So are you telling me that when you see this body posture, from two blocks away, that person probably has high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so now, we're in a stupid part of the medical world. Let's just lower it indiscriminately. Let's just say that everybody on the planet needs the same blood pressure. What's going to happen to the oxygen in this person's brain? Deeply. It's going to go lower. Exactly. So, so what's low oxygen in the brain? Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, depression. Wow. That sounds dumb. <sighs> yep. Now, why was the blood pressure lowered when you gave them? If you see a person like this, their body's going to adapt by having higher blood pressure. Why? Because they can't get enough oxygen. So they have a high blood pressure. They walk into a, a doctor's office, sitting like this. And this is a common posture nowadays. Is he going to say, "Oh my gosh, your posture's off. That's why you got high blood pressure." Gee whiz, you got to get to a corrective chiropractor to get that head reposition. That'll restore the curve in your neck. That'll restore lung function. We can get you off all of your medications. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that happens nowadays. Five years from now, of course, it's going to be common knowledge. Now we're in the dark ages of medicine. Okay. Now, couch magnets. Are you aware of them? Yeah. Yes, they can attract your butt and leave it there forever. Okay, so, so lack of movement is bad. And this normal body posture is horrible. You have no genetic defense against sitting. Your body's designed to get up and move. We're going to talk about healthy movements, but everything is designed to keep this nervous system alive. And these are the bones of the spine. If you're in this body posture, the body maintains that. What, what I mean is, these discs, they get their nutrients through movement. And if you're moving it correctly throughout the day, they get their nutrients, they can rebuild their tissue, everything works correctly. That's why we could reverse arthritis just by correcting movement. Now, if you were to say, have your arm bent in this position and don't move it for an hour, what's it going to feel like? You're going to go nuts. You're going to, oh, please let me stretch it. What if it was like this for five hours? Yeah. Okay, you're changing the shape of the disc, you're changing the shape of the cartilage, you're not getting a lot of blood and movement to it, the joint's going to be upset, okay? It's going to want to stretch out. That's where this body posture comes in. How many people sit at a desk without moving for an hour? Yeah. Okay, what happens there is these discs start to change in shape. They start to, start to change in shape of that position. It causes compression of the nerve and decreased function. This person here, you're seeing massive forward head carriage. Now, how long has this person had forward head carriage? Well, we know by looking at it, it takes three to five years to see a beginning bone change in x-ray. And this here is phase three arthritis. So that means that they've had forward head carriage for about 12 to 15 years, at least, maybe longer. So that means this person's head been forward 12 to 15 years. What that looks like is their nerve compression here. Yeah, that's the actual spinal cord. This person didn't make it. This is a cadaver sample. And what you're seeing here is the discs, not only are they decompressed, but that bone is starting to grow to stabilize unstable segments. Now, with your head forward, are those muscles in the back of your head going to spasm out to reposition?